I just want to talk about our experience at the moment. Um, and look, we work across the housing sectors. For those of you who don't know, Housing Diversity Network is a not-for-profit. We work to make help organisations become more inclusive. Our work is mostly on boards and leadership, on governance, um, on workforce development, and it's got on to, um, let me just try and stop this. It's on um, workforce development and services to tenants. We've got an accreditation scheme as well. So the main thing that I want to say, I'm going to stop this presentation because whoever set it up for me has set it up on uh, automatic transition. So in our experience, main things are um, housing sector is not broadly representative of the communities that we serve. We know that um, both from anecdotal experience when we go into organisations and through data exercises like this. So that's been revealed both in Greater Manchester and in the Yorkshire study that, that we've got. And I think over the last 30 years or so, we have made very little progress. Although we've tried to do things, we've never seen them through. We've never seen projects through. Um, and every so often the problem of the lack of diversity on boards and leadership teams comes up and we develop a program um, and we never see it through. And I think some of the reasons behind that is because we've got some very short term objectives are uh, the there's nobody knocking on the door as an inspector, seeing where are you in terms of equality and diversity, as was happening pre-2010. It's flavour of the month um, and it comes and goes. I mean, I started off as a graduate trainee in housing. So this week I had a conversation with another chief exec who said, can you develop a graduate trainee in housing programme for us? So we have these cycles of things that are never seen through. That's not to say there are not pockets of good practice. There are some really good organisations and some really good leaders who are trying to do the best but they're not these these initiatives are not being done at a regional or a national level there are just pockets of good practice here and there and I think the fact that the racial disparity work that has been done um, over recent years which highlights that Asian and black households are more likely to be poor, most likely to be in persistent poverty, most likely to live in poor, either socially rented or private rented housing, also plays itself out in the lack of such people in organisations that we serve. And I did this this next bullet point before actually looking at, this, at the, uh, the report that has been produced in Yorkshire. Disability and LGBT is very underrepresented in leadership and on exec teams. Now that is exactly borne out by the report. Um, and we have monitoring of staff by diversity isn't um, done as well as it should be. And I think it's a bit patchy and piecemeal. I was really interesting in that, that, that those slides, the thing that stuck out for me most is Manningham is a completely outlier to all the other organizations. It's the one that has got a more diverse workforce. It's got a more diverse board. And is the thinking behind that, that it's a local community organization that is very close to the communities that it serves. It's just very different to the other organizations there. It might be something that we want to reflect on in the breakout sessions. Why is there one organization that seems to be doing really well on all the metrics that, that, that have been shown there? So how do we have some conditions for change? What, what do we do to try and help um, development in terms of equality, diversity and inclusion in the sector? So he, here are my views. I think mentoring programmes are really important. I think some staff who are who aren't in managerial or supervisory positions lack mentors, they lack role models, they lack networks and it's a similar position for board members too and I think mentoring programs are really important to try and develop the workforce and develop your board, board as well. Another interesting thing is I know that a lot of people want some external accreditation so we've got an accreditation scheme we probably did about 10 accreditations over the last four or five years I'm on site with 11 so it just shows how many people are now looking at 
let's let somebody come in from outside and see where we're up to and give us a pointer of what we need to do to improve so i'm really delighted about the accreditation but i think there's more scope for people to to sign up to that we've been doing a lot of training and i know everybody in that in that um in the previous presentation said that it did training but the training needs to be different for boards it needs to be different for leadership teams when you're talking about managing a diverse workforce you're talking about inclusive leadership you're talking about inclusive cultural intelligence and similar for managers and it needs to be very different for your staff teams as well including for example estate caretakers we do estate caretaker training they hate coming into the office they don't come in with a pen they only want to be in there for an hour or two because there's something happening on the app on their estate it's bins day or something like that so you really need to tailor your programs your training programs for each of your different elements of your staff of course have some core elements but just have a think who you're speaking to i'm really delighted that a lot of people are doing strategies and action plans and we've been working for a number of people around the table about doing a, a, a new strategy and a new action plan um, I think it's really important that you have board trainee programs. I don't think you can magic a diverse board overnight. You need to get people who have got potential to be board members rather than the finished article, which will really change the makeup of your board. And there's been some really successful board, board trainee programs um, in, in recent times where you get people who are very new to the sector but are young that are more diverse and you work with them over a time period to make them board ready there's nothing guaranteed at the end of the program but they're in a far better position to apply and the other two points really go together the black lives matter and covid19 <clears throat> i think those are seismic events life-changing events that have happened to people and it's a real chance for you to reset what you're trying to do as an organization so black lives matter has highlighted major racial injustices covid19 covid is a disease of the poor and it shows which communities are far more affected than others and what are you doing as a housing association to address inequalities and it really means that i think you need to do a really thought through and thorough house um, equality and diversity strategy and I think the interesting thing here I think this might make it different to other parts of the country is I think there's a scope to do things regionally rather than each organization doing their little bit there is a real scope to try and collaborate on training programs on board programs on traineeships like the graduate trainees i think there's a real scope here for doing something regional which would be which would be far more than the sum of its parts so those were the only things that i wanted to highlight two two main things about our experience and what i would think organizations should think about doing in the future <laughs>